The Sun take that game one win on the road in Minnesota. They are two and two in best of five series when winning the first game. They did, however, lose in four games in the same round last season after they beat the Liberty in the opener. This win, of course, puts Connecticut one step closer to making the WNBA finals. They've made six straight semis, but they've only made the finals twice in that span. They are one and three franchises actually to never raise a banner in the WNBA. Leading the way, Alyssa Thomas. You're going to hear from her in a second. She's the distributor. She added nine assists tonight. That gives her 35 so far this postseason. That is the most assists to the players' first three games of a postseason in WNBA history. Well, what a setup for Alyssa Thomas to join us here on SportsCenter. One of four players in double digits for that Sun victory. Uh, what was the key uh, for the matchup here, Alyssa, especially from a defensive standpoint? You guys held them to just eight points in that fourth quarter. Yeah, I mean, like you said, the defense, um, you know, they were playing amazing. Fee's been playing amazing in, in the first round. And um, for us, it really came down to, to getting stops and um, executing on, on the offensive end down the stretch. Uh, you just heard the stat we just gave about 35 assists for you through the first three games of the playoffs. But how about this? You were one assist shy of a triple double tonight, 17, 10 and nine. How much responsibility are you putting on yourself to be miss everything for your team right now? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm one of the leaders of this team. Um, I've, I've been here my whole career and, um, you know, nothing changes. We're, we're in the pursuit of a, a championship. And um, when you when you start on the road like this, uh, game one is important, especially on the road. And um, I, it started with me today. Well, I got to ask about your last bucket of the game. I mean, defense on both sides was kind of tight there towards the end. Looked like the play was falling apart and all of a sudden you knocked down a big jumper. Take us through those uh, final seconds of that particular play. Yeah, I mean, we really didn't have a play. Um, more so, we were, we're kind of chaotic. And, um, you know, I, I just liked the matchup that I had on me. Um, I just scored the previous possession. And, um, you know, when I saw my opening, I, I took the shot. All right, so it's the best of five series. You take game one, but you do it on the road. Uh, you've been around basketball for a long time, obviously. Give us an indication of value uh, from a player's perspective of going on the road to get that W for the first win in the series. Yeah, I mean, it's huge. Um, we always talk about you need to at least get one, and um, game one is, is the most important. Um, you know, after game two, you get to go home and have two on your home court. So um, getting one is, is important. Um, you would like to get two, but um, can't always be stingy. So getting that first one is, is really important for us. Well, you can't get two if you don't get the first one. So game one is in the books on the Sun side. We'll see what happens in game two. Alyssa Thomas joining us here on SportsCenter. Appreciate the time. Thank you so much. From Melissa to Andrea Carter, who's back with us. This game went back and forth more than a dozen times throughout the course of the game, and the Lynx had a chance to tie it there at the end with that three. What did you see as that play unfolded? Well, Alyssa Thomas said you can't always be stingy in regards mm -hmm. to the series, but let me tell you, this Connecticut Sun defense is always stingy. That is what they are known for. They are the stingiest defense, and on this play, they're stingy, taking away every opportunity from Minnesota. They know they're looking for a three. Look at Dewana Bonner. High hand. She switched on to Nafisa Collier to use her length. They deny. They're physical. They're aggressive. They stay with you defensively, and that is exactly what they did. They did it all night long, mm -hmm. but to do it on this possession when they absolutely needed it, it was easy for them because that that's what they always do. They hang their hat on their defense. They did it all night, but especially in that moment, it won them the game. It wasn't just that moment. It was also the quarter, too. They held them to just eight points. Yes. When you look at this win as a whole, when you factor in the other three quarters as well, what is el what is something else that you take away? Well, we have to start with who you just interviewed and in mm -hmm. Alyssa Thomas because she really is the engine. That has been her nickname for this team. Things start and finish with the play of Alyssa Thomas, and she is a triple-double machine. When you talk about leading the league by a long shot in playoff, Triple doubles. Alyssa Thomas gets it done. She can shoot the basketball in that mid range. She has perfected that little one arm shot. Mind you, she's playing with two torn labrums, so we have to keep that as a factor. Ouch. But the way she finds her teammates, her toughness on defense, she can guard multiple positions with Alyssa Thomas. She is so dynamic, so strong, and so skilled, and she never gets tired. But a second key when it comes to this win, there have been games for Connecticut where Alyssa Thomas almost has a triple-double. Mm -hmm. Dewana Bonner struggles from the field, and it's not enough. They still don't get the win. In a game like tonight, with the addition of Marina Mabry, 
Dewana Bonner can struggle scoring, and Marina makes up for that scoring. That's why Marina Mabry has been the biggest trade this WNBA season. You almost get a triple-double from Alyssa Thomas. DJ Carrington plays well, 13 points, but Dewana Bonner struggles from the field. You still keep Dewana on the floor because she gives you so much else defensively and so much with experience. And you've got Marina, six threes on a Connecticut Sun team that struggles to find the basket from beyond the arc. She plays with a chip on her shoulder. She's confident when it comes to offensive scoring and she's a dog on defense the addition of Mar marina and her 20 points tonight is definitely what helped connecticut what else did they do because obviously we've seen Nafisa collier be so good in these yeah. playoffs averaging like north of 40 points tonight uh, just shy of 20. what did they do to make that happen well they're just physical because the thing about Nafisa collier is she is so phenomenal but her teammates also do a great job finding her right they get her on the move they get her when she's cutting they get her in perfect position but it's really hard to execute offensively when you're being pushed out, mm -hmm. right? So they're pushing Minnesota away from the three-point line. Now it's harder for Minnesota to even run their offense. They're denying the ball reversal, so Minnesota can't get into their action. So you limit Nafisa Collier by actually blowing up all of the other positions on the floor so Minnesota, Minnesota can't execute offensively as a whole. So what can they do now in game two to get the win with another chance at, at home here? Yeah, the biggest thing for Minnesota, well, one, they struggled from beyond the arc. I mean, Kayla McBride, Atlanta Smith, they are very capable three point shooters they struggled Minnesota averaged just under 10 threes a game in the regular season Minnesota only hit five threes in this game so in a game where you lose by three you start to think oh my goodness if we just hit one, one more more three or even two more and threes it would have been 20, a big like, difference you know they struggled from beyond the arc but a lot of that came because they weren't patient offensively they let Connecticut dictate their offense so when the defense is dictating the offense you want it to be the other way around when you're on offense you want to beat the defensive rotation mm -hmm. You want the defense to always be catching up to you. That's what Minnesota usually does, but Connecticut's defense has been their kryptonite this season. All right, so game two is on Tuesday, 930 Eastern on ESPN2. Let the semifinals begin. Game one between the Sun and the Lynx. It's also like trophy day because earlier you got head coach Cheryl Reeve being named the 2024 WNBA Coach of the Year and for the Lynx, Nafisa Collier, Defensive Player of the Year. Do you know that he was a defensive player? Like the little pregame shower situation. Mid second quarter, Lynx down to Courtney Williams finds the defensive player of the year for some offense. Two minutes to go, Sun down one. Dijon Carrington going to find Alyssa Thomas, who was huge in this game. Sun up four at the break. Now tied. At 46 in the third, Thomas, Marina Mabry for three. She did that so many times in this game. Six total threes, but five of them just through three quarters. Sun now up four, closing seconds of the third. Matisha Heidemann, Williams, that's another three. The Lynx, though, finished the quarter up five. The Lynx did not shoot great for three, but that one made it a decent lead. Going into the fourth, Collier nailing the jumper. Lynx up one, Sun back up one, back and forth they win. Sun in transition after the block shot. Carrington finds Bonner. Bonner only had 10 points. Sun up three, but Thomas was great, 17. She was also one assist shy of a triple double as the shot clock expires on that one. Then closing seconds of the fourth, the last chance for the length. Collier with the chance, but no, that is off the mark. And the Sun win game one, 73-70. Both players. Um, it, it, it's not unfamiliar to us. I mean, I think it happens to us each and every playoffs, but we honestly, we don't care. I mean, we know what we've done all season. Um, we know how we're playing. We know what we're capable of. And, um, yeah, it, it doesn't change anything. We're going to go out there and compete the same way each and every night. Anyone else? Can you pass back up to Maggie? Yeah. Oh, Coach, congrats on the win. Lynx are typically a really good team in the third and fourth quarter. You held the Lynx to eight points in the fourth quarter. Just what went into that defensively to kind of slow them down? I mean, that's just what our, what our group does. I mean, you know, this is a this is a team and a franchise, um, certainly since AT got here, that has has hung hung our hats on defense. 
Um, and, you know, we know that, that Minnesota is a, is a great team and we have to give them different looks. Um, you know, we, we liked tonight our small lineup, the versatility that it gave us. I felt like each and every player um, played with multiple levels of effort. You know, we had to be disruptive. Um, we, we had to try to force them into uncomfortable shots and, and, and understand that they're going to make uncomfortable shots. And, you know, when they did, we didn't let that get us down. We, we continued to attack on the other end of the floor and, and try to force them to, to – um, to work on D, but it was a slugfest in that fourth quarter. There's no doubt about it. I personally love the fact that they were just sitting there munching on some popcorn, a little salt, a little carbs. Eat all that. Lisa Thomas, the one of Bonner, became the first pair of teammates in WNBA history. 10 points, 10 rebounds, and five assists together in a playoff game. Well, how about this for a semifinal matchup? A rematch of last year's WNBA Finals. Liberty looking for revenge. Aces on the hunt for a three-peat. Guess who was there? Oh, Spike is in the building. I can't wait for this. Stewie came out looking like, who gonna check me, boo? She's got Elisa Clark on her there. Didn't matter, Euro step for the layup. And then Asia Wilson on the contest, and Stewie just shoots right over. And then right before the end of the half, Liberty up 10, Chelsea Gray trying to check Stewie in the post. She out here like she's teaching lessons for a living. She had 20 points in the first half, eight of 10 shooting. Against Clark, she was four of five. Against Gray, she was two of two. Against Wilson, she was one of two. Liberty had a 10 point lead at the break. Third quarter though, Kelsey Plum. We are down, but we are far from over. Lay up there. She had 12 points in the third quarter. Rest of her team had 12. And then, oh, a little, little chat session with Spike. I can't say exactly what was said, but I told him that he should talk louder. Ooh, okay. Don't forget, Kelsey is here for all things competitive. Knocks down a corner three there. It was a nine-point game going to the fourth. They were down 18 at one point. It's 75-67. Stewie kicks it out to Sabrina Inescu. Bucket. Who's loving it? Spike. 21 points, five assists for Sabrina. It's 78-67. Asia Wilson, she had 21 points, six boards. Gets the roll there. Good game, not a great game, and they needed one because Stewie was out here balling where the money resides. 34 points, 12 of 19, four 30-point games in the playoffs for the Aces, against the Aces for Stewie. There is a feeling when you get hot in this building and it feels like you're the orchestra leader of this incredible group of fans. What does it feel like in that moment when you're hitting threes, they're on a string, and you are leading the, the music? This is what it sounds like. Well, New York, thanks for showing up, showing out today. What will be the keys to not being complacent and coming out with the same type of energy on Tuesday night? We're hungry. We just want to continue to be better. We know that tonight we got the win, but it's more than one win to win a series, and we're going to be ready on Tuesday. So with that 34-point performance, Stewie ties Angel McCautry for the second most 30-point games in WNBA postseason history. Only one player has more than those six, and that's the all-time leading scorer and the GOAT, Donna Taurasi, with eight. So Andrea is still here. Like there, there, there are really only a few more things we can say about Stewie. She was really good, but how? How did she get it done? Why was she able to be so dominant? Well, I love the question when you say why, because mm -hmm. the one answer that we didn't show. So post game, Holly Rowe asked Stewie kind of how she was able to get this done or what was motivating her, and she brought up last season. She said she owed those fans something more than what she did last season. You have to remember in Game Four of the WNBA Finals against Vegas, it was at home. Brianna Stewart struggled. She was. Three of 17 from the field. She brought that up tonight after she had a 30 piece. It was efficient. They got her on the move. They being the New York Liberty. Well, the Aces got a lot of her as well. But the way she was able to play with the ball on the perimeter, go off of screens, hit mid range jumpers, she scored from all around the court, and their offense flowed through Brianna Stewart. And she had a chip on her shoulder, and it showed. Uh, speaking of chips on shoulders, I think Kelsey Plum wears hers very well. Mm -hmm. uh, also, it's, you can't ignore Spike, you gotta engage him, and no one can do it better than her. 
Besides all of that and the way that she in some ways carried the aces, what else stood to, out to you about the way she performed in this one? Well, one of the biggest things when it comes to Kelsey Plum is she was decisive and she made really quick decisions. And that's what Kelsey Plum does. She is extremely quick, she is shifty, and she is confident. And what I noticed is New York was loading up defensively. They were sending multiple to the ball. They had a lot of players coming over from the help side and they were crowding the basketball. And what you have to do when that happens is make quick reads and quick decisions. So as you're watching these highlights, what you don't see is how decisive Kelsey Plum was. And if you're the Las Vegas Aces, all of them need to play that way because at times they're playing four on five. When they're on offense and New York is on defense, sometimes it's almost like New York has a rover. They just have someone trying to crowd their space. So the Aces have to make quick decisions to score more efficiently the way Kelsey did it, but everybody has to play that way. So how many times this season have we heard Asia Wilson talk about her teammates and how important her teammates are to her? We have yeah. to fit check this Aces team for how they arrived before this game. Every last player to the T showed up wearing. Where is it? There we go. Oh yeah. The oh yeah. Yeah, this, every last one. This this was awesome. And actually, what you don't know, they're supporting two of their teammates. So this is actually their teammate Tiffany Hayes. This is Tiffany Hayes's clothing line. So they're wearing one teammate's clothing line and they're wearing another teammate's jersey. Just which is support like the all epitome around. of what they're trying to do. Yes. And then of course Asia showed up doing what she has done so beautifully, just wearing the white t-shirt and the sweats and like that's her thing and she's dominant and can make it work. And so please, I have more of that yeah uh, it was wonderful well the thing is Asia when she wears that white tee it's like she's locked in right. she's not worried about anything else and then yeah all her teammates supporting her that's how they have to be on the basketball court Asia Wilson efficient clean not worried about anything else and then all her teammates there to provide support they're gonna need that in game two game two Tuesday 7 30 Eastern on ESPN 2 that is Andrea Carter